I had an opportunity today to interview a local single expat female lady friend of mine, Felicia Brings here in Monta. But before I get started on this, I want to give a shout out to Sandra Jones from Mallard, Iowa. Thank you, Sandra, for being a subscriber. I really appreciate it, and I'm glad that you're part of our family. So I had a chance to sit down with Felicia Brain. She's a lady that's been here for in Ecuador for a number of years. She started out in, in Cuenca, moved to Bahia, and then now she's here in Monta. I ran into her. I think I actually met her through Stella when Stella was trying to find a place for her to live. I can't say enough about Felicia. I met her when I came here. I met her when she actually first came here. And I actually, the way I met her was that she had some... Uh, some technical problems with trying to get access to her bank, and I, so I helped her with that. And she's been a good friend ever since. Every time I see her, she's got a smile on her face, she's in a good mood, she's chipper, she's walking, she's very active, she's very happy to be here. And as soon as I come back, I'm gonna share my interview with you. Hey. Oh, rocket cheek. Hello there. Okay, so here you are, Felisa Brings. Finally, I get a chance to sit down and talk with you and talk about your adventure here living in Ecuador. Where, where are you from? I'm from New York City, Upper West Side. Upper West Side. How long have you been in Ecuador? I've been in Ecuador a little bit over uh, nine years, eight years in Cuenca, seven months in Bahia, eight months now almost nine months, I guess, in uh, Monta. Okay, and you are 100% retired. You, you, when did you actually retire? I don't know that you, I don't know that there's an actual date. It's mm -hmm. like I didn't have a job and I said goodbye to the job. I've, I've always, you know, I'm a writer and I, I, a teacher and a, a, I've been a consultant. And mm -hmm. so I just, when I stopped working, I stopped working. Yeah, what made you decide to go to Ecuador? Um, I really didn't decide to go to Ecuador. I, I didn't know much about Ecuador. Um, I, I suffered, uh, I lost everything uh, in the crash of 2008. Yeah. And I had, to, I had to leave New York. And I ended up in Florida. And, you know, Florida just wasn't my happy place. And I met somebody in Florida who was moving to Ecuador. and. I asked her to just tell me why and what about Ecuador, and I said, I'm going to come with you. Yeah. And I did, just like that. No research? No. no you just said, I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. Wow. So, so when you came here, you went straight to Cuenca? I went to Cuenca. So what do you think about Cuenca? Well, I love Cuenca. I love Cuenca. It's, I mean, it, I've said this before, Cuenca is the crown jewel of Ecuador. Yes. And, you know, you don't, when you're in Cuenca and you, have, you don't know the rest of the country, you kind of have the expectation that the rest of the country is going to be somewhat similar mm -hmm. to Cuenca. And, of course, it isn't. Uh, but I loved Cuenca. I lived there for eight years. But, and the first five years were really wonderful. I'm very athletic. I, I walk a lot. Slowly, 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 my breathing mm -hmm. got, got... Yeah, from the altitude. I realized I, I, I'm not breathing. I'm tired all the time. I don't want to get out there and do stuff. And I think by the time of the pandemic, I, I was in not such great shape. Yeah. And toward the end of that period, I was... I couldn't breathe at all. I was yeah. uh, struggling. And I was invited to a party. A friends of mine in Cuenca were having a birth. They have a condo in Bahia. So I went down there with them. And the first thing I realized was I can breathe. I was running up hills yeah. and walking a lot and breathing. And so I realized I had to move yeah. to the coast. Yeah. So I left Cuenca. So somebody told me, I heard through the rumor mill, that you were actually in an interview in the United States with Katie Couric. 
Uh, yes. What was that about? <laughs> well, I'm a New York Times best-selling author. Okay. And uh, I've been on the Today Show twice. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was interviewed by Katie. What were your books about? Uh, the book is called Older Women, Younger Men, New Options for oh, Love and Romance. Wait a minute, hold on. Older women, younger men. Okay, all right, because you know what I'm thinking. I know. Yeah. I, that's what everyone's thinking. Sure. And that's why I wrote the book, because if you decided to have a girlfriend or a wife who was 30 or 40 years younger than you, no one would bat an eye. It's yeah. quite normal. But if I do that, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. what's wrong with her? Well, so what inspired you to write this book? Well, I was, I was having lunch with a friend, and both of us had boyfriends that were younger. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about our issues. And one of us said, you should write a book. Yeah. And so I did. That's my, how did it do? Did it do good? I mean, you said it was the New, New York, York Times bestseller. Bestseller. Oh my God. Is it still published? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You can still get it on Amazon. I mean, okay. they're charging a ridiculous amount of money for it because it's, it's not being published anymore. Yeah, without getting too personal, as they said, if somebody goes to Amazon and buys your book, do you get something from that? Well, I should. Yeah. <laughs> Would have, could have, should have, yeah. <laughs> You should, but you don't? Or? I, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think. It's been yeah. years, I think, since I've received a check from the publisher. How long ago was that, that you wrote this book? This was in uh, 2000. Yeah. It was published in 2000. So is this what you did for your career? Were you a writer? No, no, no. I, I'm, I, I was a, uh, a corporate trainer, okay. uh, teacher. Uh, I taught at Monterey Peninsula College mm -hmm. in California mm -hmm. and LIM in okay. uh, New York City. And I worked as a consultant for Lee Heck Harrison, which is okay. a consulting firm. And during the uh, 80s, much of the 80s into the 90s, a lot of the American corporations were downsizing, were merging, and they were letting go hundreds, thousands of people. And so the companies would hire us to do outplacement services. I would do a seminar mm -hmm. for two or three days with a group of 10 people yeah. and teach them how to do a, a, a resume and how to re-market themselves, all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So yeah, I've done a lot of that. That was my career. So where, where were you born? Where, where, where did you start your well, life? Well, I was born in Germany. I was born in Munich. Oh. I'm a, uh, I'm a child of holo two Holocaust survivors. Really? Oh my. And uh, we came to the United States uh, in... It's 1950. 1950, yeah. yeah. That's a year before I was born. You're not older than me. I am. I'm 71. I'm 76. 76. Do you feel like you're 76? No. <laughs> See, I'm 71. I feel like I'm 81. <laughs> well, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. I've been athletic my whole life. Yeah. I, I'm a walker. I'll walk for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. In the heat. Yeah. And so let's fast forward to today. Okay. You're here in Ecuador. You're, everybody wants to know, what do you do? What, what is it, what's your day like? What do you do? <laughs> that was the question that I asked everyone when I got here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think, I think we're alike in that I'm also not a beach person. I didn't move here for the beach. Right. For me, going to the beach means renting a covered chair and drinking margaritas. Mm -hmm. um, so you need a project here. Yeah. And I've tried to, I was going to start teaching, uh, I was going to start a project at the university, which may or may not still happen, but a friend of mine who is from Manta, mm -hmm. I, because I, I did this in Cuenca. I had a big project at the University of Cuenca, and that I was trying, that I'd like to recreate here, mm -hmm. but there just were a lot of problems. And um, a friend of mine who's from here, I told him about this, and he said, "Yeah, well, you know, on the coast, we're not just not that sharp <laughs> compared <laughs> to the Sierra." Yeah. <laughs> 
and he's right. So what, what, what time do you normally get up every day? I get up at 5. You do? Every day? Every day. What time do you go to bed? Uh, 9, 10. Yeah. What do you do for breakfast? Just, I just have fruit in the morning. Fruit? That's it? That's it. I you usually have um, uh, watermelon, banana. Yeah. Where's your favorite place to walk? Well, my morning walk, because I walk an hour before my day starts. Yeah. I live on 24th Avenue. Yeah. Take 24th Avenue to Flavio Reyes, take a left all the way to the end of Flavio Reyes, which is the uh, Barrasquillo, mm -hmm. and then all the way down to La Cuadra, oh my God. and then all the way back home, which is a little bit more than an hour. Yeah. And that gets me started. Yeah. Do you eat out much? I eat out mostly all the time. Okay. Where's your favorite restaurant? Oh, I have a lot of favorite restaurants here. Yeah. There's, there's, I mean, I love, I love horse. I love South Indian. In my neighborhood, there are a lot of wonderful little El Murso places, mm -hmm. you know, two fifty, three dollars $3, three fifty, yeah. <laughs> wonderful yeah. meals. So Got I do that. Got a boyfriend? I don't have a boyfriend, no. Are you looking for one? Not really, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> no. you know that people are going to ask about that, you know. So. I just told you I'm 76. I don't yeah, think so. Don't, don't let that stop you. you know? <laughs> My problem, I prefer younger men. Yeah. And at this age, it's a little, you know, it's a little dicey. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you like Dulce and Cremoso? I love Dulce and Cremoso, of yeah. course. I never see you eating there. The only time I've ever seen you eating there it was when you went in there with me one time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't go there. I don't eat there that much. I, yeah. A lot of I'll expats. start again. A I'll... lot of expats like to go there. I know that. You know. I... Well, <laughs> speaking of expats, well, <laughs> you can no, cut you this go ahead. Out. What were you going to say? You can edit this. Okay. <laughs> you know, I remember you you did one of the one of your videos about crime. Yeah. I don't remember the, that much about the video, but I I do remember thinking that here in Ecuador, if you're going to get ripped off it's more likely going to be by an expat than by an Ecuadorian. And we're not talking about being gringo, the yeah. little dollar, 25 cents stuff. We're not talking st stuff. street petty crime. Either. Right, right. Yeah. right. Major crime is more yeah. likely going to be by an expat. When I arrived in Manta, the first, you know, I, was, I went to one of those, the, the coffee meetings, mm -hmm. and my first, my very first <laughs> exchange yeah. with another gringa, I introduced myself. I'm mm -hmm. Felicia from New York City. Oh, really? You know, a lot of people say they're from New York City, but they're actually from upstate or something. Yeah. She said that to me. That was my introduction to the gringo community, the expat community mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I believe um, that. Yeah. <laughs> another, I believe one, that. Yeah. another one said that, you know, I don't live on the beach, so where I live is the ghetto. Mm -hmm. So... I'm a little cautious yeah, with expats. Yeah. I was, you know, because one of the questions that I was going to ask you is, do you go to any of the expat hangouts? You know, uh, I don't. I mean, I... I went, I, but I, I, yeah. I, I don't really much anymore. Once in a while, I'll show yeah. up, but it's not a regular thing for me right. anymore. Right. You have a, a very good friend here named Carlos. Yep. I've done a little short video about him once. Yep. Tell him. Tell us about him. He's a very interesting guy. He's a very interesting guy. Yeah. He's my best friend in the world. Yeah. I'm his. We're each other's family. We have yeah. adopted each other. Um, when I went, when I went to that uh, birthday party in Bahia, he was there. He was there. His parents were at the party. He was at the party, and I remember that night, I said to his parents, I had barely knew him. And I said to his parents, Carlos is my new best friend. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be True. exactly what. Yeah. And I needed to find an apartment. He just did everything for me. He helped me, found an apartment. I had to go back to Cuenca to pack up and move. Mm -hmm. he, he painted my apartment. He made sure that the Wi-Fi was installed in time for when I got there. He just took care of everything. He's extremely brilliant. Um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, unfortunately, he's, he's gay. And in 
Ecuador, especially here on the coast in these mm -hmm. small towns, you can't be gay. Okay. Just like you can't be single. Yeah. You can't be childless. Yeah, yeah. You have to be, you yeah. have to conform. And unfortunately, he was tormented by his family, just really wow. tortured. And we ended up being great friends. We, and the essence of our relationship, basically, is that we take care of one another. Mm -hmm. And so, and I had to get out of Bahia. There was no question that I was not going to stay there. Right. And so when the very best real estate person in all of Ecuador, my friend Stella, mm -hmm. found an apartment for me in Manta, I brought yeah. Carlos with me. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I, I know him, and, and I, I'm going to put a link to his information in the description because he's a great interpreter, he's a facilitator. He does everything. There's so many things that he, he can teaches, do for you. He teaches Spanish, Yeah. great Spanish teacher. He also teaches English. Yeah. yeah. Bilingual, fully bilingual. Um, he's a translator, uh, he's a facilitator, he'll take you to the doctor and translate. Yeah. He'll do everything, everything that you need. If you don't speak perfect Spanish, he'll take care of it. See, I tell everybody when you come here that you need somebody like Carlos. You need him for at least a day to start. You need somebody like him to just take you, help you get your cell phone, help you introduce you to a doctor, introduce you to the mall and to the clinic, you know, the medical clinic. I've had people come here and three days later are sick and they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Yeah, you know, don't know where to go or anything, you know. So some, we need to help. Call Carlos. Carlos. You know. Yeah, call <laughs> Carlos. He's, he's a great facilitator. So. So, all right, so you, you, you eat out, you get, you get up at 5 a.m., you eat out, you, you walk. What else do you do? Is that it? <laughs> Not That's that much. much it. Yeah. I write. I'm still, I still, still write writing. every once in a while. I write about, you know, people that I meet here. And, yeah. uh, have I haven't pets? found you my have niche. Pets? Oh, you, what? You haven't found your niche? I haven't found my niche yeah. in Manta yeah. yet. I'm still in Manta. searching. Yeah. We, we met this very, very interesting man uh, about a week ago. He has a museum in his house. I mean, his house is a museum. He just buys. He spent years just buying artifacts mm -hmm. from indigenous populations on the coast. And then he had to buy a second house just to store all the artifacts. You can't, so he has two houses. You walk through the house, you're just surrounded by artifacts and art mm -hmm. pieces and Ooh. Yeah. So we're gonna try. We wanted to try to help him get his stuff out into the and world. Get his story told. Yeah. So, um, so we're waiting to hear from him. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't quite found my my niche yeah. in Manta. Yeah. Yeah. If you have any one piece of advice for a single woman coming here, that you can think of, what would it be? Any one thing. Huh. That's a tough question, I know. It's a tough question. Yeah. I, uh, well, it helps if you speak, if you're, look, if you're a single woman, if, if you're looking to meet a man, then uh, speaking Spanish would be an asset. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think just being uh, sm street smart, yeah. careful. Uh, what about managing expectations? I tell people, leave your expectations back home. Yeah, that's, you know? that's very good advice. Leave your expectations back yeah. home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You come here because, with an open mind. Because you, Ecuador is a surprise. Mm -hmm. Ecuador is, I've traveled a lot. I've been to many places in the world. Yeah. And I think Ecuador is just one of the coolest places you'll ever find. Mm -hmm. Some very cool people. I know people that actually moved here because there isn't an American uh, military base. Yeah. yeah. I know other people that moved here specifically because Rafael Correa was the president and they trusted. Um, so you can't have expectations. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's Do you ever plan to go back home? Never. Never. You're this gonna is stay my right home. here in Ecuador. This is my home. This is your home. That's good. That's good. Uh, how's your health? How's my what? Your health. My health? Eh. 
Well, uh, generally pretty good. Yeah. Uh, these days I'm having dental work done. Mm -hmm. I've had a cold for a couple mm -hmm. of months. Yeah. That's yeah. not going away. You know, that sort of thing. But generally, I, I think I'm in pretty good yeah. health. Do you have a doctor? Do you have a regular doctor that you... You know, I, I don't. I just got a regular dentist. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, have a, uh, I have a maestro who did all the work in my apartment. Yeah. And he's a great friend. He's a wonderful person. And he said his, told me his daughter's a doctor. Mm -hmm. So when I need a doctor, I think I'll call her. Okay, good. Okay, so you're going to stay here forever. I'm going to stay in Ecuador forever. I don't know mm -hmm. about Manta, but yeah. I will yeah. def I'll, I'm not leaving Ecuador. I've been saying that since I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Okay, well, good. I think that we can cut it off there. I think that, you know, if anybody, let me, let me ask you this. Are you, how do you feel about people writing to you, especially single women that are looking for advice? Do you feel comfortable with that? I or? feel very comfortable with okay. that. Absolutely. Okay. I don't. I'm not interested in having men. Yeah. yeah. Call me and say you want to go out. Sure. But yeah. uh, people who need information or advice, I'm I'm happy to. Okay. Offer that. So if any, we'll just go ahead and put it out there right now. If any women, especially single expat women that are moving here, if you want to get in touch with Felicia, send me an email and I will give them your email address. Yes, yeah, fine. That way I'll help, help you screen. Okay, you know, cause that'd be great. Believe me, there are some fruitcakes. I there. know that. <laughs> I've met them. <laughs> there, there are. So. I've met them. All right. Okay, we'll cut it off there. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Perfect. So that's it. That's, that's Felicia. I want to t share something that we didn't talk about in the video. I, we talked about it after... I got through taping, but one of the things that I wanted to tell you about Felicia, that she, uh, a story that she shared with me, is that when she came here, she was lost, had no clue where she's at, and where she's going, how to find anything. And one thing that she said that she really loves about being in Ecuador, and it's evidenced just by this story alone, is that every time she asked for help and asked for directions, on how to find something, how to get to the mall, how to get to anywhere. They didn't give her directions, they took her. They took her and took her to the place. That's the Ecuadorian people. That's the way they are. If, you know, you say hi to an Ecuadorian and they're going to respond and they say hi back. And you ask for help, you're going to get help. Nobody shies away from helping you out. So I just wanted to share that w bit with you uh, before uh, we finish this. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you, if you want to, uh, one thing that I keep forgetting to say, if you want to get notified when I post a new video, ring that bell. Just click on that bell. Until then, ciao, ciao. My mom says that I'm too needy and I need to go to the dog shelter and find someone who loves me. That's not what I said. I said you cannot have three dinners. <laughs>